Hello, my name's Scott Perry. I'm a professional magician and this is a magic review. It's a kind of magic. In today's review, we are looking at Eye Drop by Tim Ellis. This is a little bit of an older trick, but uh, a good one nonetheless. Um, and I wanted to bring some attention to it because some people may have missed the opportunity to buy this and it's definitely something worth buying. So the TLDR on Eye Drop by Tim Ellis is it's a great trick. Uh, if you like what you see and you are a you know parlor stage magician you're definitely going to get some use out of it at some point whether that's with the routine itself that, that is sold with eye drop or whether it's with the gimmick that you receive with it you should get something out of this so i really recommend the product as a whole package uh, i think it's great it's 45 pounds 50 dollars something like that uh, if you can get hold of it still uh, definitely buy a copy if it's what you're looking for and uh, I hope that, that this is kind of restocked with new phone models and things like that and I hope there's like a new an eye drop 2.0 uh, I hope I do hope that it hits the market but without further ado what is it well it's a routine where you take a bag and you place someone's phone inside the bag the let's see if I can show you The bag uh, has a mesh front, so you literally see the you see the phone you see the phone go into the bag and it, it hangs down here and then you get the spectator to hold on to this. They see their phone inside and you're doing some sort of funny routine. Tim does teach you stuff, but I'm just telling telling you roughly what this is. Uh, and then at some point during the routine, the the phone falls out of the bag. It smashes into lots of pieces. Uh, there's a little bit of, uh, did the magician do something wrong? Is the person's phone okay? It's a little bit of a disaster. And then you can reveal the phone, the spectator's phone, inside a nest of boxes or, or any way you like, really. So it's, it's a way of making someone's phone disappear in a funny way that allows you to make the phone reappear in, in any other place that you want to. That's generally what eyedrop is. That's the effect. And uh, yeah, there's not much more else I can add to that. That's around about the routine. What do you get? Uh, with eyedrop, you get a really nicely made bag that's, that's going to last you a really long time, if not forever. You also receive uh, thorough instructions that are downloadable. Uh, you receive a, uh, I received an iPhone. I had the iPhone edition. Uh, they did sell some Android editions as well, but I don't know if they're still available. Um, and then you get some stickers for the phone uh, because obviously it's a dummy phone that, that does fall out of the bag and, and breaks. It's not the actual spectator's phone. Um, so that's that's pretty much what you receive with eyedrop. And as I said in the TLDR, it's uh, 45 pounds, $50 uh, in that price range. Um, so yes, for, for the gimmicks that you receive, uh, I think it's definitely good value. How easy is eyedrop? Uh, it's pretty easy. So I think most of most of the effort with eyedrop because the work is pretty much done for you uh, in in the bag and then uh, I'll, I'll explain in a little bit the, the reveal because Tim doesn't sell you away necessarily you, there's nothing included in the package that allows you to reveal the phone that's something that Tim teaches on the download so I'll go into that in a moment but the bag pretty much does everything for you so everything else in the routine is or the effect is your routining. How entertaining the trick is depends on how well you write some performance or, or something or how well you perform it in general. So it's the trick itself is very simple and it's very easy to do. But I would say even though that's a beginner uh, in terms of simplicity, it's a beginner magic trick, I would say that it's definitely an intermediate magic trick to make it into a full routine. Tim does teach you his routine and uh, he does give you some ideas on the instructions and and uh, the, like the the information that he gives you is very useful but yes the the routine isn't necessarily going to be entertaining by itself so if you're going to buy eyedrop you need to know that, that you will have to do a little bit of um, rehearsing a little bit of thinking about how you might use it the story that you'll tell but the trick itself in terms of the kind of sleight of hand is is very easy uh, the reset time is very quick as well. Obviously, with an effect like this, you're not going to be um, performing it over and over and over again 
at the same event. It's going to be one performance. Uh, if you're doing multiple stage performances or multiple stand-up or parlor performances during a day or, or an afternoon or an evening, then you're going to have plenty of time to reset it anyway, you know, with the 30 minutes, one hour, three hours, five hours, however long you have in between your shows. Uh, so the reset time isn't really an issue because this is a one-time trick. This is not something you will repeat to the same audience. However, it does only take a couple of minutes to reset it, um, if, if that. So it, it is a very, very quick reset if you did need to perform it again uh, for another audience. You know, uh, one audience was leaving the theater and one audience was coming in as they were leaving and you had a quick turnaround like that. It, it can be reset in, in a matter of uh, a minute or two. The angles on it are, are fantastic. You know, you can pretty much perform this surrounded. Uh, you, you could, I think this would actually go down really well in the street as a street performer, as long as you're performing on, on gravel or concrete or some sort of hard surface on the floor. I think it would be great for that. You would have to be a certain kind of character to get away with it without getting punched. But I do think that it, it would suit that kind of performance. Also stage performances as well and, and parlor performances. Um, but my point about this is that the angles are, you know, 360 degrees. The thing about this with the angles is that when you put the phone into the bag, uh, people can see it. So if people are really close, if you use a brightly colored phone that's very distinctive, and then you put a phone into the into the phone that you receive because you receive a, a, a standard, bog standard phone, let's say you take a phone that's, that's pink with a yellow case, and that goes inside here, people might be able to tell, um, you know. Uh, Tim does give you some advices uh, and tips on, on how to minimize this, but every every phone, has a black screen, right? So I don't think it's too much of an issue uh, because if you put the if you put the phone screen side down, then you're just going to see a black screen no matter what phone someone has. Um, but it's usually the the outer casing and then also the back uh, of phones that are different colors and different uh, designs and things. So if an audience is too close, they might be able to see that it's not quite the same phone. Uh, that you say you put in the bag. So yes, angles wise, you can do it 360 degrees. Uh, there is a little bit of a, a discrepancy depending on how close your audience is uh, as to how convincing the, the fake phone is that falls apart. And then also at some point to do the reveal, you will need to uh, retrieve the spectator's phone from the bag. Tim does take you through ways of doing this on the instructions but that obviously has its own angle restrictions and you are going to have to figure out some way of uh, ditching this bag somehow and retrieving their phone from it and then loading that into a nest of boxes or pulling it out of your pocket or somehow retrieving that phone. And that is angle sensitive. Whether you put it inside a box or inside a bag or, or as you fold up the bag and put it in your pocket, you, 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 you somehow... Um, fold it in a way that you can easily take the take the phone out that is a little bit more angle sensitive so to perform the eye drop where the the spectator's phone falls out onto the floor shatters into pieces 360 degrees but then you're going to have to figure out a way to um, retrieve the phone from the bag and then load it into whatever way you are going to reveal the phone which is something you should know before buying the trick. Pocket space, well, pocket space doesn't matter too much uh, because as I said earlier in the review, this is not something that you're going to repeat for the same audience. This is something that you're likely going to have on a table or in a, in a box, or it's something that you're going to be performing standing up or on a stage uh, in a parlor situation or stage situation. So you're likely going to have this um, inside something, not on yourself. So I don't think pocket space is really applicable for eye drop. But that being said, you can fold this up pretty small and it could take up just one pocket if needed, if you did want to perform it that way. Uh, so yes, pocket space is is minimal. My final thoughts on eye drop, as I said in the TLDR, it's a really great effect. I think it has a lot of potential. I think that the routine that Tim teaches you because he teaches you how to build his his method of nest of boxes. So he teaches you 
exactly how to create the nest of boxes that he uses in his performances to retrieve the phone and load it into the nest of boxes. So it does show you that uh, he doesn't really show you anything else. So you will have to have some kind of knowledge of magic to get the most out of this routine. There is also a bit where he's very cheeky and, and he says when the, when the fake phone falls out and shatters on the floor that uh, he, he has another eye drop bag where he says, oh, oh, s sorry, I got the wrong bag. And that's how he switches the bags out to give him time to, uh, you know, um, retrieve the phone. I think that's very cheeky, the fact that he's kind of insinuating that you should buy another eye drop, but these bags are not sold separately. Um, so I think that's very cheeky, but uh, I guess it wouldn't be such a bad thing if you did buy two eye drops, because then you would have more freedom uh, to to perform in that way. But you could always just sew a piece of black cloth that looks similar to this. And I don't think anyone would notice in a, in a stage parlor situation. So not too much of a problem. Like I said, I just think it's a bit cheeky of, of Tim to, to tout his product even after you've purchased it. Uh, but I think, that's, I think that's just about it. As I said, there's a few things you need to consider before buying it. You need to consider that you're going to have to figure out a way to reveal the phone uh, before, before you, you perform it. And uh, yeah, the bag's gonna last a long time. As I said, overall, I think the product is really good. The teaching by Tim is really good as well. There's not much uh, I can say negatively about this product. I love it. I'm going to use it at some point. I don't know when, but I will use it at some point. Of course, as well, you need to take into consideration that if you're going to be performing this on a carpet or a soft flooring, you're not going to get the full effect. Uh, the best effect is when the phone falls on a hard surface, you get that crack and the shatter uh, because the, the custom phone that you receive with it uh, does it's it's made in a way to fall apart and for pieces to shatter everywhere and then it, it easily goes back together so if you're going to perform it on carpet or on a soft stage you won't get that that kind of reaction when the phone drops out um, because people won't necessarily be able to tell that the phone's cracked and fallen apart uh, which is part of the fun of the routine uh, so i hope that covers everything that you could want to know about eyedrop I do recommend it. I think it's a fantastic effect, a fantastic routine. I think it's funny. I think it has a lot of potential for lots of magicians out there, young or old. The bag can be used for other things as well. You don't just have to put a phone in here. It can be used for all kinds of tricks. Uh, as magicians love to say, it's limited only by your imagination. Uh, and this is one of those kinds of things where it, it is a little bit. So yes, I thoroughly recommend iDrop. I hope you found this review helpful. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. As ever, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next review.